Hello ladies and gents, this is Daniel for Ruck the JVM, and in this video I'm going to teach you four nice ways to read files in Scala that are probably my favorite. So this assumes that you know some basic Scala and how to transform Scala data structures. As always, I will recommend that you code alongside me so that you remember something from this video. And whenever you need to read files, just refer back to either this video or the code that you write here and now. This video is for your convenience, also available in written form at rockthejvm.com forward slash blog. So one of the hurdles that many learners of JVM languages face, including learning Java and Scala, is how do I read a goddamn file? And uh, then you have your face blasted with data input streams and file readers and buffered input whatever, buffered this, buffered that, and neo channels or whatever. So uh, this is a lot of psychobabble. And in this video, I'd like to make things clean and simple and share some code snippets that you can use directly. This is for Scala programmers of all levels and is concerned with reading text files. And we'll deal with binary files in uh, another video. Assume that you have a file path and you want to read some text data from it. So I'm going to use the exact example of this particular article whose video you're watching right now. And I have the file here for a uh, nice ways to read files in Scala.html, which is the blog post that is attached to this video. And I want to read this file line by line. So I'm going to define a file path as source main resources HTML, and then I'm going to simply copy this name of the file. You can use any file path that you like. So here's four of my favorite ways of reading this HTML file or any text file line by line in increasing order of niceness. Version one, the Java way. So uh, one of the Scala's most powerful features is that being based on the JVM, it allows hassle-free interoperation of the, gen, uh, the Java standard libraries. However, we won't do anything here that involves the cycle babble of Java. The plain old Java scanner will do, and a scanner is a stateful object that allows reading characters or lines directly from a file. Let me give an example. So I'm going to define a file as new file with the capital F from Java IO, which I'm going to import automatically, and I'm going to pass in the file path. So this is a file object. Now we can read data from this file by creating a scanner. As a new scanner from Java Util, and, uh, and indeed it's very useful, and we can pass the file to the scanner as a constructor argument. Now. All we have to do when uh, reading f uh, lines from this file is just to say while scanner has next line. So while scanner has next line, we can simply read a line. So I'm going to read a line as reader or scanner dot next line. So this will be a string representing a line from the file. And you can do something with the line like printing it out. And uh, if I write a main method and I simply run this application just as it is, then I should see the HTML contents of this file printed to the console just like that. The reason why this works is that because this is an object at the initialization of the object, this code will be executed. So I don't need any code in main. Cool. So that was version one where we have the Java scanner. However, this is very stateful and employs the abhorrent while loops on which I have another video which I will attach in the comments here. So uh, although this could be way, way uglier than this, we can obviously do better. So I'm going to insert version two, the Java way with cheats. I'm uh, saying that this version has cheats because all you need to do is add an external library called Apache Commons, which you can find in your build.sbt file when you create your Scala project, and you need to add this particular line to library dependencies. I will add the relevant code in the description of this video. So after you add this definition to library dependencies in your build.sbt, the IntelliJ IDE will automatically download the library for you and you will have access to its types. So all you need to do is write, let's call this file contents, 
as file utils from org Apache Commons IO and just read lines from file. And you can pass in a file object. And this will be a Java list of strings. So this will be a list of strings uh, signifying the lines from this file. So uh, if I comment this thing out, the, the first version, and I just write file contents dot for each with the for capital E, and I pass a print line, which uh, Scala automatically converts to the relevant Java function, thank God, then we will see the exact same contents from the file printed to the console. So if I run this, I'm going to see the exact same thing that we saw in version one. But again, this is Java style. So we don't have access to the Scala niceties like map, flat map, filter, for comprehensions, and so on and so forth. So this is still not optimal. So I will teach you version three, which is the Scala way. This is much cleaner and also does not involve cheats. You can only use a standard library type. So I'm going to import Scala IO source and I'm going to write as follows. I'm going to say Scala file contents as source with a capital S, which I can import from multiple parts. And I'm going to use Scala.io.source. I'm going to say source.from file and I'm going to pass a plain file object, much like I did before. And when you do source dot from file, you can also do get lines. In this case, get lines will be an iterator of string. This iterator is a Scala object on which you can apply map, flat map, filter to list, make string, and all the niceties that we are used to from the Scala standard library. The best part is that this iterator over here is not fully loaded in memory, so unlike versions one and two, you can read the file slowly rather than load everything in memory and then disposing of the contents, all right? So you can use Scala file contents dot for each print line. This is the for each with the non capitalized E. This is the Scala standard method here. So I'm going to comment out version two and I'm going to run the application as is just to show you that this works just as well. Now I'm going to show you version four, which is my absolute favorite. We can read files like a boss. So uh, my gripe with Scala and many GVM languages is why can't they read a goddamn file like Python? So just like open and read. In Python, you do something like open, add a path, and then read or something like that. We can surely do this. So here's what I'm going to write. This should probably be in a standard library or something like that. I'm going to define a method called open at a path of type string. And this will be a new file at that path. So this is a plain Java IO file at that path. Now I'm going to use a dirty trick. So I'm going to enhance this file with an implicit class. I'm going to say implicit class that I'm going to call rich file. This rich file class takes a file as an argument file colon file and has one method def read just like that with no arguments, which will employ version number three. So I'm going to do source dot from file at that particular file dot get lines. So here's what I can write with these two being defined. I'm going to define read like a boss as open at my file path dot read, which is an iterator of all the lines in this file at the file path. So if I run this application, if I do read like a boss dot for each print line, I'm going to run this in the exact same way. And we're going to see the exact same contents here in the console. So how does this work? So basically, this is the big guns, the implicit type enrichment is called. So we're basically enhancing the normal file type, which belongs to Java with an implicit class. So when we call the read method, after opening 
at the file path, which is a file object, normally the compiler will not allow this because the read method just like that does not belong to the Java file class. But the compiler is a good friend to us and will search for all the possible implicit conversions from the file to whatever might have the read method. In our case, there is an implicit class that we called rich file, which can take this file as an argument, which does have a read method. So the compiler actually does new rich file with our file with open at file path. And then it calls read method on this. So notice how clean, easy and intuitive the API is just open at a file path and then call read on it. Ain't that simple. So um, why not do that? It, I, I don't quite understand for the life of me why this code is not part of some sort of standard library. But this is definitely my favorite version 4, which is the good API. So you learn to read files in Scala with some really nice intuitive and clean code at the end. I hope this is useful and you will find the links to everything that we discussed in the video description. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe for more videos and tips like this and follow me on Twitter and LinkedIn for the latest updates on upcoming material. In the meantime, I'm Daniel for Rock the JVM and I will see you soon.